here are important guidelines to keep in mind as you embrace the challenges of online classes. 1. Set up a good working space. It is important that the place is quiet, clear and free from distractions. 2. Make yourself look good online. Wear clothes the way you do when you go to school for in-person classes. 3. Have a respectful tone. When communicating with your teachers and classmates, observe a certain level of formality. Use respectful greetings and signatures like Good morning, Mr. Dow, Hi, Ms. Taylor, Please and Thank you. 4. Be kind and be professional. Make it a point to be respectful in your comments even if you disagree with others. Conduct yourself in an online class with the same respect, politeness, and professionalism that you would exhibit in a real-life classroom. 5. Properly use your webcam and microphone. It's good to show your face to give the impression that you're actively engaged with the lesson. Turn your microphone off when your teacher or others are speaking. This will eliminate background noise that can be distracting. 6. Properly use the chat box. Don't post irrelevant remarks. Instead, use the chat box to clarify misconceptions or share great ideas you have about the topic at hand. Don't yell by typing in all caps. In most situations, typing in all caps is perceived as inappropriate. 7. Always make an effort to use proper punctuation, spelling, and grammar. Observing these ensures clear expression of your thoughts or ideas. 8. Make sure to submit your assignments the proper way. Knowing how to properly submit your work online is key to your success as an online student. 9. Take time to read. When asked to comment on a post, take some time to read through each of the previous discussion post responses before writing your own response. And 10. Think before you type. What you share in an online classroom becomes part of a digital record. I hope that you observe these guidelines to help you in your online learning. May you have a wonderful school year! Good morning, learners. It feels so great to be with you today again. I am Sir Aaron Jan Cortez, your English teacher. In this session, I will take you to another fun-filled and exciting learning journey. The module that you have received for the fourth quarter is divided into three lessons, namely, Lesson 1, Judging the Relevance and Worth of Ideas. For Lesson 2, Judging the Soundness of Author's Reasoning. And lastly, for Lesson 3, Judging the Effectiveness of the Presentation. After going through this module, you are expected to Letter A, Identify the information or evidence from the material presented. Letter B, Identify the criteria or basis in judging the soundness of the author's reasoning. Letter C, Write feedback from the presented material. Letter D, judge the relevance and worth of ideas presented from the materials. 
Letter E, note the claim and supporting details in the reading text. Letter F, judge the soundness of the author's reasoning. And lastly, for the letter G, judge the effectiveness of the presentation. So what are you waiting for? Get hold on your week one module, paper, notebook, and pen. Together, we will unravel all these learning tasks which you will surely enjoy while at the same time learning. In lesson one, you were tasked to identify the relevance and worth of ideas. This time, you will learn a new lesson which will give you an idea on how to judge the soundness of author's reasoning. You will learn how to carefully weigh evidence and test its premises before forming judgment. To begin with, let us proceed with what's in. For task number one, you're going to identify whether the given statements are fact, opinion, reasoning, or evidence. Choose the letter of your correct answer. Write your answer on your activity notebook. You will be given one minute to accomplish this task. And your timer starts now. Time's up, let us now check your answers. So here are the answers for activity one. Good job class, you are absolutely fantastic. Are you now ready for your initial task? If so, let us proceed with what's new activity. Based on the carton below, why do you think he asked the other person if he is Chinese? Cite three reasons. Write your answers in your activity notebook. You will be given another minute to finish this task. And your timer starts now. Time's up, let us now check your answers. The answers may vary, that's why evaluation and checking will be done right after this video. Fantastic! High five for a job well done!
It is now time to dig deeper about the topic. In the previous activities, you recall your knowledge about soundness, valid reasoning, evidences, and etc. Let us now explore more about soundness of reasoning. To judge the soundness of the author's reasoning, it is important to know some keywords. Soundness means the quality of being based on valid reasons, good judgment, or reasoning. Many students have the impression that informational facts posted on social media are true and correct. But remember, a lot of informational texts are based on an author's ideas, beliefs, or opinions that are sometimes not considered to be sound. Readers must not assume that everything in an informational text is true. There was news last March 2020 saying that banana can cure COVID-19. It garnered a lot of shares, likes, and comments. Yet that news has been found misleading and definitely not true. Just because it's on the internet, it doesn't mean it's true. Students should focus on the author's main idea. In addition, they should identify the author's reasons and pieces of evidences that support the author's belief. In order to judge the soundness of the author's reasoning, the following questions can be considered. First, what does the author want the reader to believe? That's for the claim. Number two, how does the author help us believe his or her statement? That's for the evidence. And lastly, for number three, is the supporting evidence is strong enough to support the author's main idea or belief? That would answer your reason. Let us now use this image to serve as an example. For instance, the top of the table represents what the author wants the reader to believe. In here, you will provide the author's claim. While on the other hand, the legs of the table represents the supporting details provided within the text. These are the evidences. So, you can now judge whether the author's reasoning is valid and sound. You must be able to evaluate the text and judge the quality of the author's idea by evaluating the supporting evidences. This is now your reasoning. The following are the characteristics of a sound reasoning. Number one, the quality of data. Number two, the existence of supporting details. Number three, 
the relevance of the additional data. And lastly, for number four, the existence of additional possible explanations for your reasons. Let us now try to read this activity and analyze how the author dissected his idea to show his claim and evidences to the readers. Based from the given example, we can clearly say that smoking is a dangerous habit and should be stopped. Evidences tells us that the author uses facts to validate his information. Therefore, his reasoning is sound. That's all for our discussion. I hope you were able to jot down all the necessary information needed for our next activities. For our activity number one, you're just going to read the transcript of former U.S. President Barack Obama's speech and find out the issue he presented in his message to the people. Then, answer the questions that follow. Write your answers in your activity notebook. For activity number two, you're just going to identify whether the following statement is an example of factual information or subjective content. Write F for factual and S for subjective. Write your answer on your notebook. Again, you will be given another minute to finish this task. And your timer starts now. Time's up, you really amazed me with your ideas. Since your answers may vary from this activity, evaluation and checking of your answers will also be done right after this video. Let us now proceed to what I have learned. Complete the graphic organizer below by supplying the necessary information. Write your answers in your activity notebook. Again, you will be given one minute to finish this activity. And your timer starts now.
times up, your answer to this activity may vary. That is why evaluation and checking of your answers will be done right after this video. Time to put everything into action. Let us do what I can do. Have you ever noticed how children behave nowadays? Is it because of what they watched on the television? Read the text below and answer the questions that follow. You will be given one minute to accomplish this task. And the timer starts now. Good job, class! Your answers may vary in this activity. That is why evaluation and checking will also be done right after this video. For your final assessment, read the essay Smartphones from Toy to Tool and judge the author's soundness of reasoning using the rubric given below. You will be given an additional time to accomplish this task. And your timer starts now. Good job, class! Your answers may vary in this activity. That is why evaluation and checking will also be done right after this video. For your assignment, you will be doing your additional activities. Read the article below. Note the main ideas and supporting details. And that's all for today. I hope you learn and enjoy a lot about this session. Thank you for your cooperation. Till next time, bye!